I am Christine Crockett Smith, and I do have a book called 18 Master Values Be the Parent You Wish You'd Had. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about today, really. What I do every day that I wake up is I try to raise consciousness. I try to encourage people, every single person I come across, whether it's a text or an email or in person, to try to take control of their lives and be everything they can be. For the first 25 years of my life, I didn't have coping mechanisms. I hadn't been taught, like I said, I didn't have the religious foundation or even a spiritual foundation and I hadn't been taught anything like that. And I just basically fell forward, actually down and forward, just rolled right down the hill, did everything you can do to ruin a human life. But then my, my, my spiritual journey has been 20 years and it's kind of hard to talk about what I would do versus what someone else would do because I have done so much work to be where I am today. And where I am today is I'm a happy 98% of the time. And even that 2%, when something does not go the way that I wish, I told a story yesterday about dropping my keys in the water, my car couldn't get my car open, whatever. But even when things happen that I wish didn't happen, I'm only in it for an instant. It hits me in the gut or in the heart or in the head, whichever it is, and I can't keep from it because I don't have my defenses up 100% of the time. But I'm able to instantly go, okay, wait, 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 wait. What is happening here? How can I fix it? What is really happening here versus what I thought was happening, what that first little thing was? How can I do something about it? And how can I, and sometimes that's just in your head. I had my heart broken just a few weeks ago. I'm not gonna give the details because the person who wrote my heart might see this, but, um, <laughs> But it was a Sunday morning, and one, one thing that I say often is that all disappointment comes from expectation, and I believe that at my core. Somebody who's really pissed off at somebody right now is gonna disagree with me on that, but I believe that it's true, and it helps me a lot, and it helped me a lot in this situation. I completely thought that things should go one way, and it made so much sense in my head with my knowledge base and who I am that this is the way that it needed to go and it didn't. The person did not show up in the way that I expected them to. And it felt very personal and it felt very selfish on their part. And it felt like what I was hearing without them saying it was, I don't care about you at all. And it was someone really, really important in my life, so it hurt a lot. And I cried, that, that curled up in the fetal position on the couch alone crying. And then I noticed I was doing that. I thought, okay, wait, 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 wait. What did they do that was wrong? Nothing. They, they were living their lives. When I stepped back from that thinking it was personal, I bet they didn't give me a thought at all. When I stepped back from thinking it was saying I don't really care about you at all, they were just busy. It wasn't about me at all. And the disappointment came from my expectation of what I thought they should have done. And I worked through all of that, made a couple of phone calls, little terrific phone calls to people I love. And I do what I do. I started breathing and very consciously. And when I breathe, you know, it's interesting in the meditation world, people talk so much about breath, but they don't really talk about the difference in breathing in air and breathing in life energy. And if you know anything about quantum physics and quants, which is the smallest, smallest, smallest part of particle of matter that we're aware of, it's out there, it's everywhere, and it absolutely is energetic, and it absolutely is positive and negatively charged, and we absolutely can control what we're putting out and what we allow other people to send to us. And when, when, when I'm meditating in a, in a situation like that, especially when my heart's broken or I'm really sad or in despair, I really consciously invite in the positive life energy that some call prana. And I very intentionally exhale any negative energy. And sometimes in a minute it's resolved and sometimes in an hour, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
it's resolved. But yeah, um, but I like I said, I've had I've taken 20 years to get to a place. Another thing that is true about me that is not true about most people is I live in 100% faith. And what I mean by that is I always know it will always work out. I may not know what that looks like. I may not know what the pieces are going to be or who's going to show up or how the money's going to come or how the bill's going to, but I do know it will always work out. I believe every choice we make every day, whether it's a word we're speaking or an action that we're taking, comes from faith or fear. And unfortunately, a huge part of our population lives in fear, and they make their choices from fear. Fear of loss of relationship, fear of loss of self-esteem, fear of loss of money, fear of loss of home, fear of loss of job, fear of loss of education, fear of loss. And that's where they're acting from. And that makes you stagnant or move backwards. So it's hard for me to answer that question for everyone, except just to say, if you're not in a place where you want to be and you wish it was different, start talking to people and reading books. In the back of my book, I have four pages, which is really eight, of books that have touched me that have changed me, that every time I go back to them, I get something different from them. And anytime any comes, anybody comes to me in despair or depression or brokenness, it may sound crazy, but the first thing I always say is go to a bookstore or a library. Go to a bookstore or a library. Start looking at the covers, start reading the backs, start looking in, and guys, I'm telling you, one of them's gonna light up. One of them is gonna be like this, is what you need right now. Or if you have a friend who has a great library or has a lot of books that they have done a lot of searching in. Um, so you have to start your journey just deciding, this is not where I want to be. I want to be somewhere different, and how am I going to get there? And start educating yourself about all the different ways there are to do that. Does that answer your question? OK. Yes, sir? Did you have a question? I try to stay away from fear and try to keep it with me. It's a negative energy. I'm trying to stay positive as much as I can. Good for you. Good for you. Because you know what? Good for you. And you know what's true? When you, I believe in meditation. And again, it's one of those things that people talk about, but they don't really explain what it means. And um, it's different for everybody. And for me, I have to do it every single morning. And what it means for me is getting to a place of centeredness groundedness. I have a six word mantra I do that just reminds me of what I believe and who I am and how I want to be in the world. And it shifts my energy. It grounds me in positive energy such that throughout the rest of the day, that's what I'm giving out without saying a word to your point. You deciding to be positive means that you're impacting the people in the grocery store. You're impacting the people next to you in the car. And they don't even know it. <laughs> Good for and you. For that, for that day, it's going to be everything. It's going to be everything. It's going to be all right. That's just the way. That's the mindset. That, that is the most fantastic advice that you can give anyone. Start your day that way, and it'll go that way. And if you find yourself midday and it's kind of going south, sometimes you just got to ride it out. Sometimes it's going too far south with too much momentum, and you can't even stop that ball rolling down the hill. But you tell yourself that night before you go to bed. This isn't going to happen tomorrow. And you wake up and make it better. Yes, sir? One more thing. Yes. I like to, to speak to people in the morning, start the day, day off right. There's nothing wrong with smiling at someone and tell them, you know, have a nice day. How you feel? You know, there's a lot of people, they don't, you know, they don't have a nice day. They got problems. And, and I try to encourage them to look up. Good. And that's where your health comes from. Good for friend. you. I believe that smiles are like, the most micro way we can impact other people's lives. If, when you wake up and decide to be positive and you're asking for the energy to flow through you and impact people, if nothing you do other than smile at your coworkers, smile at your family, it shifts you fundamentally, but it also shifts others. And to see that happen, to see somebody walking down the street or the clerk in the grocery store or whatever, and just because you're not just smiling, you're also blanketing them in love and positive energy. 
And to go forth and do that is like the easiest way to make a difference in the world. You don't have to start a nonprofit. You don't have to have workshops and write books and just, yeah, such a, such a good point. I'm glad that you made that. I think it's one of the most important easy ways, especially even if you're feeling down, especially when you're feeling down. But if, if, one, one, one more thing. if you don't uh, have forgiveness in, in your heart, you are the person that's paying for that. If you forgive others, instead of you carrying that negative energy around, it makes you sick. Right? What's that saying that um, hating somebody else is like hope, drinking poison and hoping it kills somebody yeah. else? Yeah. Forgiveness uh, is really important. Is, yeah, you, you, you're not the president. Right? And a lot of people think that forgiveness means letting the person off the hook. Mm -hmm. Somebody who did something really horrible, and you're like, no way, they did something really horrible. Mm -hmm. It's not about them. Right. It's not about them. It's about letting that out of your heart so that you can go forth and smile and spread positive energy, right? Thank you for that. Really good points. As you're going forth in your life, if you're not right where you want to be and everything isn't amazing, one place to start is when you're thinking about making change is to think about what lights me up? What is that thing that I would do for hours at a time, even if nobody paid me? And do more of that, even if you can't yet, I'm going to fling that yet in there, make a living at it, that doesn't mean that feeding your soul isn't important. Find what lights you up and do more of that. And what these kids are doing these days with the internet and having a friggin' laptop is they are turning it into a way of making a living. They have four billion people that they can reach and say, guess what, I love sewing on patches more than anything in the world. I love sewing on patches. If you have some stuff and you have some patches and you want patches on it, send them to me and I'll sew them on and I'll send them back. And before you know it, they've got 15,000 people sending them jeans and patches. They're doing it. We can learn from them. Find what lights you up and find what's draining you. Who in your life or what in your life? Do you feel like this about every time you think about it? If it's your job, you have some serious work to do. If it's a person, you have some serious work to do. But I'll get to that in a minute. Find what drains you and do less of that. And you can't do that until you identify it. So find out, think about it. And throughout your day, start noticing that feeling in the gut of your stomach when you have to go do that thing. People, too, who lights you up? Who do you love seeing? Who loves you no matter what? Mm -hmm. Who do you come away from feeling filled up? Spend more time with them. And who drains you? Mm -hmm. Who are you spending time with? who when you walk away from them, you almost wish you hadn't even seen them, and spend less time with them. And this is really important, and it's a critically important part of my life and so many others that I've worked with. A lot of people have been told and taught that there is no other way to think about this, and that is that family is family. And we stand by family no matter what. And we deal with family no matter what, and they are here for life. And I'm just telling you, I'm happy 98% of the time. And my family is chosen family. And some of them I share blood with. And some of them I do not. The people who I look forward to seeing when I'm happy to see their texts, when I can't wait to have dinner with them, that's my family. And they're there. They're the ones I call when I'm crying. And there are people that I share blood with that are not a part of my life. There's no hatred. There's no animosity. I wish them, in fact, mm -hmm. this is a good one, guys. You might want to write this one down. When I do have someone in my life who is one of those draining people, you know what I do? And this is to your forgiveness point. I commit to sending them love and joy and peace 
and grace. Every night before I go to bed and every morning when I wake up for 30 days. Love and joy and peace and grace. And I mean it. I get their picture in my head and I send it to them energetically. And guys, I don't know if you believe in magic or not. Not only does it heal my soul and allow me to not hate them and allow me to forgive them, it changes them. I don't know how. I don't know how that works. I don't know if it's angels taking my message and passing it down, if it's guides. I don't know if it's God. I don't know if it's energy. But I know it happens. Yes, sir. I was just wondering, I heard you talking about joy and peace. So those are fruits of the Spirit. Joy and peace. You know what I'm saying? I've never heard them called fruits of the Spirit, but I like it. Yeah, it is. It's the fruits of the Spirit. But, but the thing I'm saying is that it, it, it's okay to have things. Like people have accumulated a lot of things. You have got a computer. Those are really distractions. They can be. They don't have to be. Well, that's true, too. But it's okay to have things, but don't let things have you. That's a beautiful way to say that. <laughs> that's really, that's, that's a whole other talk, and I'd be glad to have it. Because, yeah, it's a thing, especially with parents, of course. They have to deal with that. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, um, I agree with you on the family thing. You know, um, my family, my mom, though, specifically told me that there's a saying in our family where some family members you have to deal long hand of the spoon, mm -hmm. meaning like you said, you send them love, okay. peace, joy, right. But because, for example, I had certain family members who I was constantly getting distracted and out of focus from what I was trying to do because of things that they were constantly calling me about. Mm -hmm. And I had to do that in order for my peace and sanity mm -hmm. and to be able to focus on what I wanted to do. Like you said, the thing I would do without getting paid. Right. I'm doing it now. Yay! Finally, I had to, it was hard, but I, I had to do that. Oh, that makes me so happy. You know? So, um, thank you for that, because yeah. I, I definitely understand that. Yeah, if, and it feels good to get affirmation that you're not a bad person for doing yes. that, right? And yeah. you think you are at first. Yeah, but you, yeah. You, and I'll tell you what, too. I never slam the door shut. Mm -hmm. I never slam the door shut. It, oh, there's a crack. There's always a crack. Because we change. We all change. We all shift. Y'all are going to leave here today shifted in certain ways, some way. We all change. It's always open. But you need to come at me with love and joy and peace and grace for it to get wider and for me to allow you in in a bigger time. And, and there's no, no judgment about that they're wrong mm -hmm. or that they need to change. I just, we talked about this yesterday. I just, I don't allow it in my life. It's, my life's too important and so are y'all. We only get so many minutes. Yeah. And I think the people that you choose to spend time with is the most important decision you make because of that draining or filling up thing and because of the energy. And it has to be a conscious decision. And guys, that sounds so obvious. It's like such a duh thing to say. But my gosh, the people that are just floating through life, mm -hmm. spending time with the person that lives next to them that they don't care about, the person that works in the cubicle next to them, that they're going to lunch with them. They don't care about them at all. In fact, they exhaust them. They go lunch with them because they're right there. They're in the class with them. So they go study with them and they don't, <laughs> they don't care about them. You got to be conscious about that one. I'd rather be alone than be with somebody that drains me. And to your point, you can let them know that gently or not at all. If you come forth with positive energy, people, you're not comfortable to be around for people who just want to complain all the time. People who just want to talk about what's wrong in the world and talk about the darkness, they're going to stop calling. Yeah, <laughs> they do. And if they, if they don't, you can even, and I've had to do this, I've had to say, I'm sorry. I'm not interested in talking about that. But how's your dog? <laughs> or whatever. And they get it. They get it. And I have friends in my life where they get that about me. They still go on to everybody else and complain all day long, and they wonder why their families are so upset. But at least when they're with me, they get, well, we're going to talk about the dog. <laughs> yes, sir? Yes, sir? I'll tell you just the, the easiest way to think of it. And it's kind of rocking the world because um, science and anything that we can't smell or touch or taste or feel or hear have been on opposite sides, whether you call it God or universal consciousness or infinite intelligence or whatever you want to call it, source energy. There are scientists 
who want to say that that doesn't exist. And actually, there are a lot of scientists who have experiences that make them believe that it does, but they can't talk about that with their scientist friends. So a quant is the smallest particle of matter that we have identified. Smaller, way, way, way smaller than an atom. And here's what they found. In a laboratory setting, a quant can be a particle or energy. And what they have found at the laboratory is that the scientist, the person doing the experiment, can decide if a quant is going to be a particle or energy. Changes everything. Changes the conversation. There's still so much to learn about it and so many different opinions, but basically that's why it's such a big deal. Thank you. You're welcome. One thing that I have learned um, over the course of my reflection and study and trying to figure out who the hell I am and how the hell all this works is every healthy relationship, every healthy relationship, whether it's with your child, with your partner, with your neighbor, with somebody you work with, needs three things to be healthy and solid. I have yet to find anything, an example that does not fit in this, but if you have one, let me know. It needs love, it needs trust, and it needs respect. And any time that you see a fractured relationship between you and your parents, or between you and your child, or between you and your sister, between you and your loved one, or between you and your neighbor, or the person that you work with, you can identify that one of those is not there. And the really cool thing about knowing that is then you can start working on fixing it. Why don't they respect me? What did they do that made me not trust them? And is that fixable? I'm not giving them the love that they deserve. One of those three things. Every relationship in your life, if it's fractured, if it's not working, if anybody else that you come across has a relationship that's not working, run that through your head. LTR, long-term relationship, love, trust, respect. They all have to have them. And it's really cool from a healing perspective. It's really cool when, when that thing just isn't working and you don't know why. You find one of those things and you can fix it. Excuse yes, me. Yes, ma'am. Did you say you haven't found one? I have not. Three? No, I haven't found a relationship that is fractured where I can't identify which one of those oh. is missing. The, 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 the next thing I'm going to talk about is really important right now. It's always important. It's always been important for the, all of humanity, but I am a citizen of the United States of America, and it's really, really important right now. A lot of fractured relationships come from the lack of realization that we all have different perspectives, and they're all valid whether they're yours or not. Perspective, another way to say it is opinions. We talked yesterday a little bit about how we're born, we're these little babies, and then we start becoming who we're gonna become based on what we hear and the people in our lives and where we live and the education that we get. And all of that shifts our perspective. Someone can say something that you don't think is true, that feels dissonant, that you wanna dismiss. It doesn't mean it's not true for them based on everything that they've heard and grown up believing and where they're going, it could be true for them. So you should be able to dismiss it as not yours without necessarily feeling like you have to change their mind, that you can't let them live in their truth. It's critically important in human dynamics and in connection. And I believe that human connection is why we're here. And I feel like the more people we have in our circle that got our back the better our lives are. And understanding that you don't have to argue with somebody who thinks differently than you. That whole agree to disagree thing is underrated. It's such an easy, beautiful thing to do. And this is, where you, this is how you know when to do it. When your heart starts racing. When you realize that you're starting to move towards angry, that's when to just do it. Just, you know what? Awesome. 
you think the Lakers are the best team in the world. <laughs> Good on you. And I'm going to believe what I'm going to believe. It's, it's not only OK to do that, it's really important. One thing I say, and this is a great visual, when you are in a theater and a movie's playing, and there's 500 people in the audience. They're watching 500 different movies. And here's what I mean by that. We've all had our different hurts. We've all had our different triumphs. We all know different people and different characters. We all have had different situations. If you have had someone in your life kill themselves, you are going to react very differently to someone killing themselves on the screen than someone who never has. That's a dramatic example, but everything, the clothes they wear, the words they say, you walk out of a movie with your friend or your sister, and you go, oh my god, could you believe it when he said that? And she's like, he didn't say that. She didn't even hear it. It wasn't hers. That's not why she saw the movie. And the guys, that's life. Every argument, every conversation, every meeting, this meeting right here, if we had somebody interviewing you guys on the way out, it'd be like you were in 16 different presentations. Each one of you would have something that lit you up, something that you clung to, something that you were going to take out of here and use. And somebody else might have been like thinking about lunch during that time. <laughs> but the way to take that information and use it and improve your life is the next time you're out in a conversation with a person, email, social media, face to face, on the phone, and they think differently than you do. The first step is allow them to. The second step, which is even cooler if you can get there, is try to figure out why they feel that way or why they think that way. And the coolest thing when you do that and you shift and you go, oh my god, I never thought of it that way before. Very similar to the Matthew Ricard empathy and compassion thing that we talked about yesterday and that I just mentioned. It changed my life. Oh, here's another one that changed my life recently. I grew up with parents that weren't even there. And I have told the story a thousand times. My chaotic childhood, had to raise myself, had to figure it all out on my own. Wah, 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 wah. And I never meant it. Wah, wah. I truly have no regrets. I truly believe that everything that happened to me up to this point made me who I am and allows me to have empathy for other people, compassion, sorry, for other people who are going through similar things. And one of the most important things it did for me is anytime somebody wants to write off a child, I'm right there in their face. Can't do that. Can't do that. People change. Perfect example. I was a mess. I was a mess, and everybody but two people in my life had written me off. So last week, I watched an interview with Oprah and Lin-Manuel Miranda, who wrote, directed, produced, and starred in the most successful musical in the history of Anne Hamilton. And she asked him, What'd you get from your parents? What were the greatest things you got from your parents? He said, two things. One, you're an immigrant. You're going to have to work harder than everybody else. Just do it. Don't bitch about it. Don't complain about it. Just do what you got to do to succeed. Number two, this is, what, this is not them talking. This is him talking. The second gift they gave him was that he was neglected. They were so busy trying to put food on the table, trying to pay the rent. They were working two and three jobs each. They were never there. He came from school by himself. His sister grabbed dinner. He grabbed dinner. There was no sitting around the table. And he got to go into his imagination. And that's where he learned to write and create characters. And hearing that, and this was just a couple weeks ago, guys, changed me forever. Changed me forever. The neglect that I got from my childhood is one of the greatest gifts I was given. I had to figure out so much on my own that my kids didn't. Yeah, so listening to other people, that's like the best step to like not only let them have their own opinion, but actually maybe sometimes figure out why. And even if you don't go there, even if after you find out why you're like you're still wrong, mm -hmm. at least you can respect their position a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Clifton talked a little bit about abundance and scarcity and it being a mindset from the book that, that he mentioned. There are a lot of books about that. It is so important for you to figure out which one of those you subscribe to. It's not just about money. It's about love. It's about opportunity. 
We talked about this a little bit yesterday, whether you call it the self-fulfilling prophecy or the law of attraction or God's blessing, no matter what you call it, if you truly believe in your head and heart that everything that you need to succeed is out there, you're going to find it because you're not going to stop until you do. You're going to find the people that are going to help you. You're going to find the way to make the money. You're going to figure it out. If, on the other hand, you believe in scarcity, there's never enough. All people are mean and rotten. There aren't any good people. There's not enough money. There's not enough opportunity. That's what you're going to find because you're not going to go out and look. You're going to sit at home complaining with all those people that we're talking about that we're not going to hang out with anymore. You're going to sit around complaining about how everyone's done you wrong instead of taking responsibility for your life. Taking the time to figure out which one you're in and if you are on the line or in a scarcity mindset, figure out how to get to having an abundant mindset. And again, I can't tell you exactly how to do that. It's a process. It's a living and learning and finding the voices that speak to you to help you believe that. It's a faith fear kind of a thing. But it's incredibly important. And I'll tell you where I am today, and this is kind of a new thing. I don't have you any of you heard of conscious capitalism? It's a, a movement, it's about 30 years old. I've only recently found out, but it's new in the last 15 years was a book written by the owner of Whole Foods, John Mackey, and Raj Sasodia. And the concept is this. We can do business where everybody wins. We can do business where we treat our employees right, mm. where we take care of our clients or customers, where we do what, our vendors, what is in our vendor's best interest or our landlords. We can do business win-win cooperation instead of competition, and still make money. Not only still make money, quite often make even more money. And the whole concept is to support businesses that are working that way and try to move businesses that aren't more towards that. There's also a thing called social entrepreneurship mm. where I had one of my speakers at my conference, Sophie Eckridge, started a company called Taisha, T-E-Y-S-H-A. -E you, can, you can design your boots or shoes online. They also make bags and things. And they're made in Guatemala by artisans there. They support so many families. Mm -hmm. And they pay them a living wage. And they support their art artistry. Be really careful. Hi. So glad you're here. One thing I've started doing really consciously lately, I, I, I think of my dollars as votes. I think of my dollars as I'm voting for what I want more of. Or I'm voting for what I want less of. So if I truly support the little businesses and I want the little mom and pop places to survive way more than the corporations, I can't, I, I, I can't, I need to go to the little coffee shop around the corner. I need to not buy the $5 t-shirt from the place that's importing them and using slave labor even if that means I have to save $5 a week or a month to get to the $20 to buy the t-shirt from the people who are paying a living wage to their workers. It requires some research and some awareness that it's out there. The information is out there. And if you think about that, every time you spend a dollar, what you're saying to the economy, oh, you're the best. Thank you so much for coming. Think to yourself if you're spending that money um, that's going to help make the world a better place or support a business that is doing good work in the world. Can you give us the name of that company again, the social entrepreneur? T-E-Y-S-H-A. And if you just Google social entrepreneurship and you start going down that path, it's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful world of people doing good work in the world. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Kendra Scott. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. We talked about them yesterday. But it does take a little bit more money. So it's easy to say, oh, 
oh, let me just go here and grab this, you know, when really I could be supporting my own people right here in my community, in my backyard. Yes. And spending a little bit more money to do that versus someone that, that is using, you know, abused workers or, you know, child labor still is something that goes on. Yep, it takes a conscious commitment. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's so important to, I mean, you worked hard to earn it, you know. Be sure you're spending it in places that are serving your values. And support our creatives. If you walk by somebody on the street playing music and you love it, put something in the bucket. <laughs> if you need art on your walls, Maybe instead of buying the print at a department store, go to an art festival, even if it means saving up $20 a week until you have $100. You're supporting their, their livelihood and their, their lives and all the time it took into figuring out how to do that. And if you know anything about the life of an artist, it's usually not an easy life. Buying from people who actually make stuff, I personally believe that the energy of the person who made it is in it, whether it's a piece of furniture or something you hang on the wall or something you put on your body. And you want to be careful what energy you're bringing into your space. Mm -hmm. My mom used to say, you know, um, there's this whole thing, find your passion, find your passion, find your passion, right? And people like either, I don't have one or I don't know what mine is or I can't make a living sewing patches on jeans or whatever <laughs> and my mom used to say it's great to follow your dreams but you got to pay the bills yeah and she's right but what I believe is true is that you can either do what you love which is beautiful if you can figure out how to do that or you can decide to love what you do mm. if you have a job right now and it's not the job you would have chosen or maybe it's with people that don't light you up you still get to choose how you're going to react in that situation, what energy you're going to bring to it. And if you're bringing good energy and you're doing everything that you can to get through the day and it's still sucking you dry, there's no shame in starting to try to figure out how you're going to figure out what to do next. And back to that whole law of attraction, self-fulfilling prophecy, whatever you want to call it, God smiling on you, whatever you want to call it, if you decide that you've got to go, and you start looking, my belief is it'll show up. Oh, I've got so much more to say, but I'm running out of time. Um, a couple things I'm going to leave you with. One is be careful of what labels you put on things, especially on people. We do that so readily and so easily without thinking about it often, and it divides us. It's really not us versus them. It's really us and them. It's not you versus me. It's you and me. I have a saying. <laughs> My birthplace is Earth. My race is human. My politics is freedom. And my religion is love. And what that does is erase a whole lot of labels that would keep people from thinking that they can be a part of my universe. Think about that. I've just got a couple minutes left, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I do. Repeat. Erase. All four of them? Race. Birthplace, earth, earth. Yeah. race, human. human, politics, freedom, religion, love. You're welcome. <laughs> it serves me well every day of my life, for sure. Um, I raise consciousness. I told you that. I do have a book called 18 Master Values, Be the Parent You Wish You'd Had, which really is just about encouraging people no matter what their age to decide what your values are so you can live by them because you can't live by them if you don't know what they are and if you do know what they are and you make sure every thought in your head is aligned with them I promise you you'll have the life that you came here to live I also have 
My next book that is going to be written but isn't yet is called 90 Windows, and that is about the year from the time I left my husband until a year later. I had woken up in 90 different places. I traveled. It's a little bit about that journey, which is pretty fascinating, <laughs> but it's also about what I learned about compassionate divorce and about how our country is set up to make people who have decided not to be together anymore hate each other, mm -hmm. and that you have a real responsibility if you find yourself in that situation to take control of it and decide to be polite and kind and decide to come at it from a place of strength and not weakness. They, they take us when we're at our most broken and quite often things don't go well. And then I have a book, another one called Flamingos in Trees in Alaska. That's a whole other story. But it's about finding yourself single midlife and um, taking the time to figure out who you are before you proceed into trying to find another relationship to make sure that you don't just jump right in and make the same mistakes that you made the first time. And with all three of those initiatives, that Master Values for parents or actually for anyone and 90 Windows and Flamingos and Trees in Alaska, I do workshops, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, and I talk to groups about any of those things. Um, Power of One is evolving into a retreat center where we will have weekends, three-night programs and four-night programs where you come out and have these kinds of conversations with people who think like us and who want to grow and do better and be better. And it won't be a preachy thing, it'll be a sharing thing. And that's in the works, and if anybody wants to, knows anybody that would like to help make that happen, you know where to find me. <laughs> I'm also starting a thing called Finding Your Way, Your Way, a personal journey to the divine. And I'm doing that with a friend of mine, and it's going to be live on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And then it will rest on our YouTube page. But it's about a lot of people. I call it a social, a, a spiritual poverty. A lot of people grew up with a religious base that didn't fit for some reason, or maybe without one at all, and just dismissed it all as just not worthy of their time. And they never took the time to find out what they really do believe at their core. And it's just going to be about that. It's just going to be conversations about what do you believe and why? What do you believe and why? What do you believe and why? What book have you read lately? Who did you hear talk recently? It's just going to be a conversation about the religion of love, no matter what you call it and no matter what you want to bring into it. Love, no judgment, finding your way your way, or F-Y-W-Y-W. -Y -W. And um, last thing I'm going to tell you, if you don't believe in the power of one, just Remember this visual. Guru Singh is a man in California who runs a yoga studio. He's an extraordinary human being. And he says, a single candle can devour the darkness of an entire room. And not one of you can argue with that. If you walk into a pitch black room and you light a, one candle, it changes everything. I hope a single candle can devour the darkness of an entire room. And I challenge you all to go forth and be that candle and find any way that you can to use what you have where you are to make the world a better place. Thank you so much. At all. <laughs> oh. Okay, concerning when you were talking about your job, and um, as I mentioned, I'm on um, doing what I started a company with two of my friends. Um, it's, it's a film production company, and I do have a part time job that I'm just doing to eat. Sure, yeah. Know, pay the bills. Yeah. And what I'm having a hard time with, and, and it's not just this one, but the, the a one that I have previously, like the one that I'm on now, the part-time job, they always want to make me supervisor or something. No, I don't want that. I just want to do this to pay the bills so I can focus on this. I get it. So uh, what do you suggest when they always want to give you more and more? No, no, I just want these hours, do this so I can stay focused on this. Thank you so much. I'm so flattered. I'm so grateful that you see me that way. I don't have the energy for that right now. If it ever changes, I'll be sure and let you know. But for right now, yeah, sure, sorry. The question was, 
um, if you're in a situation where you just have that job that isn't feeding your soul but it is paying the bills and they keep wanting to move you up and they keep wanting to make your responsibilities bigger, how do you handle that um, graciously? So you can stay focused on what is your heart's desire, your company that you, yeah, how do you deal with that? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so flattered. I'm so flattered that you see me that way. Thank you so much. If I ever feel differently, if my circumstances change and I can take that on, I will be sure and let you know. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how I would handle that. Any other questions? Thank you guys so much for your time. It means so much to me that you came here and took part of your Saturday morning. You said you're not a morning person. I'm not either. <laughs> Usually it's like, don't call me before noon, but I am up until 2 or 3 also. But um, yeah, thank you for coming. Hi, everyone. This is Barb, and we just finished this awesome Empower series at the Holland Hills Library today. Oh, the speaker, Kristen, she was awesome. The Power One. Everyone that knows me very good knows that's what I believe. I just put it on Facebook and Instagram yesterday. The power of one. One person can change this world with the help of others. But it takes one person to start something and many others to continue to win. So if you didn't make it out this time, come out the next uh, Empowered series and I will be here. Barbara, peace and out. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Kendra Sweat. I am here at the Empower Series today, The Power of One. I have been to an Empower Series uh, before and I've met Clifton Johnson, the creator of the Empower Series through some other organizations that we're both a part of. And I'm just, his energy and what he brings to the, the Power Series and his passion and how he's inspired to really just build up the people in his community. Um, that's what brought me out. And so I definitely want to support him and I'm so glad that I came because it's always something that um, gives me and fills me up with something new to think about, some new inspiration, something that I needed. And today with Ms. Smith and her talk on the power of one, what I'm really taking from this today is that I can do whatever I want to do with where I'm at. So many times I've allowed fear and thinking that I have to be a certain level or be in a certain place financially to do what it is that I'm being called to do hold me back, but really I can go ahead and step out and do just that with where I'm at and I don't need to have everything perfect and in a row, just I just need to take that first step and get started. So that's what I'm taking away from here today and I'm just so excited for my journey and the inspiration that I've received today to get going. Hi, my name is Nahimi Lasan and I am with Comerica Bank and I decided to come out today to the Empower Series. Um, and it was really uplifting. I learned so much today, but the thing that stuck out to me is that I am in charge of my own narrative. And to be that light that I want to see in others, I have to bring that light to people. And um, just understanding how to protect your personal, your mental, your physical space, and uh, uh, keep it positive. Um, in order for you to be able to elevate yourself. So it was a very good uh, presentation and I really appreciate it this time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pauline Holmes. I'm with Queens and Future Queens and I'm here today at the Empower Series. And it's been an amazing um, journey because they are definitely giving great information and preparing you to be a successful entrepreneur. And um, it's just great people connected. So I had a great day today here.